hope you guys enjoyed the video so far but now let's get down to business this was me having a great time last night on the island beautiful island great people just an awesome awesome time but now let's get down to the business of investing in real estate in the caribbean the good the bad and the ugly i'm not gonna get too deep into things but just give you some things to think about investing in properties in the caribbean sounds like a great idea doesn't it you have a vacation home you have a lot of extra money coming in from all the rentals whether it's airbnb or long-term renters own property on a tropical paradise dream come true or is it more like a nightmare have i made a mistake by trying to invest in now first of all i just want to give you guys an update on the negotiations um unfortunately they have not gone the way that i want um that just means in terms of the you know whenever you're negotiating you have your target in terms of what you are looking to achieve in terms of what your number is so the most that you're willing to pay for something and uh, the minimum favorable terms that will be acceptable for you so this is not a negative in terms of the deal not being possible it's a matter of sweetening of the deal so Ideally, the, the goal in any kind of negotiation is to get, again, the best possible deal. So you want to get as close to your ideal price as possible. But just because you may not get that doesn't mean it's not a good deal. And it certainly doesn't mean that the deal doesn't happen. So we shall see. I will continue. We are not finished with that process there are some concerns that I have with the property that I will address in future videos as well as the homeowner association in the area they are doing some things that can potentially compromise the value of the property and future appreciation potential but again we'll talk about that in future videos but right now let's talk about the risk versus rewards in the Caribbean I'm not gonna get into too many details if you guys want me to do a more in-depth video go ahead and comment below and let me know but for this video I'm just gonna keep to some of the primary things that I've run into personally looking at this current deal and uh, just in general some things to think about so one of the attractions to buying property in the Caribbean can be depending on where it is the price you look at it and you say man I can get this for only 90,000 100,000 only 250,000 and you think about the idea of using it as a second home you know if you're doing short-term rentals you can easily leave it empty certain times of the year where you can go there and enjoy your property as well as perhaps do some uh, management duties sounds like a great deal but some things you need to consider are things like the obvious one the weather now if you are trying to invest in a property that is in a an area that is um, at risk for whether like hurricanes you have to be very careful the idea of your property being wiped out or suffering massive damage and having that liability of you having to do the repair also if you're doing short-term rentals long-term rentals now you've got someone that's in there and liabilities and it can be a little bit complicated now for my particular case the house I'm looking at has actually weathered many really serious hurricanes very well due to the location of it it is somewhat protected by geography so for me that is not something I am too worried about but just because the house survives 
that's not the only concern of bad weather like hurricanes. You have to also consider things like the infrastructure, which is very vulnerable on many of these islands. For example, a major hurricane hits the island, your house survives, that is awesome. But what if the power goes out for three weeks? The entire stay or the time that your guests are going to be there. What if it's out for a month or two months or three months? Do you think you can rent a property with no one in it? because no one wants to rent a property. I just said, I apologize. I'm, I had a very long week. Um, today I ended up getting a headache. I was planning to go out on the town tonight like I did last night and enjoy myself, but I've not been feeling well. So that is my excuse. Anyway, if you have a property with no electricity, Good luck renting it out is what I was basically getting at. So imagine electricity is out for three months. Things like this do happen. So imagine having a property vacant unexpectedly for three whole months. Now consider that that may not be the end of it because just because maybe the electricity is out that long and it could be out longer, I'm sure there's other things going on. So electricity out for six months maybe? Then it comes back on but what's the condition of the island and is it such that people would actually want to rent your property so you got to think about unexpected extended vacancies due to inclement weather aka huracan i'm sorry i had to do it hurricanes the other thing to consider when you're looking at property in the Caribbean is the costs. Yes, the price of the house may look very attractive. Only $150,000 as you can see on the screen. Only $125,000 as you can see as well. But, alas, there are potential hidden costs. So for example, some of the islands due to the poor infrastructure they have very expensive electricity so imagine you guys that live in cold climates and you see your your bills skyrocket in the winter time two hundred dollars three hundred dollars and this is potentially just for a single person living alone just because of the heating requirements now that is a place where you have relatively cheap electricity in the Caribbean, electricity can be very expensive. So imagine if that $200 or $300 bill is the norm. 12 months a year, two, $300 or more for electricity. Yes, when you're looking at Caribbean properties, make sure you are doing the appropriate math. Don't think like you're, you're talking about the continental United States. So find out specifically what the costs are for electricity. Also things like insurance. Insurance, if you go to the Caribbean thinking like you're in the United States or a continental United States rather, um, you might find yourself surprised. You can pay $400, $500, maybe even $600 a month for insurance because of things like high risk areas due to potential hurricanes the higher the risk that you will make a claim and a potential large claim as well the more you're going to pay so if you're going to buy a house in an area that is potential hurricanes to deal with then you're going to pay accordingly with your insurance so high insurance really expensive electricity low property taxes well, that's not a negative, but that is something that I have found. There are places in the Caribbean that actually have very, very low property taxes. I'm talking about $60 a month. That's right. I've seen property taxes as low as $60,000 a month. Now, for comparison, some of the properties that I've been looking at in the continental United States, on the, I was going to say North Coast, East Coast, Northeast rather, I've seen $1,000 to $12,000 a month 
just in property taxes. So 60 bucks a month, hell yeah. But don't forget that $500, $600 for insurance. And don't forget that two, $300 a month on electricity. One thing you can consider is getting solar panels, but depending on the area that you're living in, maybe that's allowed, maybe it's not allowed. But these are the types of things you need to think about and look into if you're thinking about investing in the islands. Also, you got to think about the strength of the economy. Puerto Rico right now is, is dealing with some things financially. I mean, they had the hurricane, but just in general, they're not in the best financial state. Many islands in the Caribbean have similar situations as well. And these are the kinds of things that are going to affect your property values. One of the reasons that you see the, the values as low as they are, you know, looking at potential great deals for you is because of the economy and the economy also the connection to the infrastructure as well. So if that's why the prices are low, then if they don't fix it, they don't turn it around, guess what? The prices can go even lower. So that's a risk. You go and you buy a $200,000 property, you hold it for five years and you can't even get 180,000 for it. That would not be good. Now, if you're a long-term person like myself, then in terms of, I say long-term, in terms of uh, how long you hold the property, uh, then it might actually work out because as long as you can get tenants, as long as you can get the rent coming in, as long as it's covering the mortgage, then you're pretty much good to go. You're building equity every month and uh, no worries. You bought it for two hundred thousand. It's worth one hundred eighty thousand now. So what? As long as it's paying for itself, as long as you're building equity, it's all good. Anyway, I don't want to make this video any longer than it already is. Um, I really should be resting, trying to get myself better. Um, I think I'm fine. I'm just. It's just I've been really stressed out and then this trip. Uh, I've, I've been having some fun here and there, but uh, uh, unfortunately, this is not a. This is not a uh, vacation. It's not a fun trip. I'm just trying to see if I can squeeze that in considering how hard I've been working. But ultimately, this is a business trip. So, I am human and I think I needed to chill out tonight, which I did. And hopefully I can you know, jump right back into it tomorrow with a bang. This is Carlos Pix. If you enjoyed this video, click on the like button, subscribe, and smash that bell so you don't miss out on future videos right here on Carlisle's Picks.